It's Master Sam once again, and while you may know all there is to know about green jackets and back nine charges at Augusta National and pimento cheese sandwiches, I've got three things I bet you didn't know about golf equipment at the Masters. Number one, unlike at just about every PGA Tour event, as well as the other three major championships on the calendar, there are no golf equipment vans on premises at Augusta National during the Masters. Typically, golf equipment companies like Titleist and TaylorMade and Callaway and Ping and Strixon and Wilson and Cobra and all host of others are allowed to park large trucks very, very close to the practice area because technicians and tour uh, executives are going back and forth between the practice area and those vans, getting feedback from different players, working on clubs, doing regrips, doing loft and lie checks, sometimes doing equipment tests in the days leading up to the tournament. However, during the Masters, those trucks are parked across Washington Road, so the technicians have to go back and forth across the road through a special gate where they have permission to enter the premises, and then they go either around or through the caddy building to get themselves onto the practice area at Augusta National Golf Club. Also, they need to be escorted or brought in by one of the players. You don't just sort of hang around and linger in the practice area during the Masters. They are really encouraged to come with a player or at the behest of a player work with that golfer, and then get out. If you want to talk business, if you want to hang out and linger a little bit and have a discussion, most of those conversations actually happen directly behind the Augusta National Golf Club near the first tee underneath a really large oak tree. That's the place where tons of business gets done at the Masters. It does not get done behind the players while they're warming up and practicing on the practice area. Typically during PGA Tour events, you'll see loads of people hanging out in that area. Again, during the Masters, totally different story. Number two, and it sort of relates to number one, is that unlike at weekly PGA Tour events, you're not going to find manufacturers laying out different demos and different clubs for players to try around the practice green or around the hitting area at Augusta National Golf Club. Typically, manufacturers, especially putter makers, will drop large bags and have lots of different offerings for players to try. Everybody on the PGA Tour, just like us, is open to the idea of finding a little bit of lightning in the bottle. And if they've got a flat stick that they're really unhappy with and they, something happens to catch their eye, Oftentimes, they'll pick something up and at least give it a try, and that'll spark some conversations about equipment that may, may want to get into. At Augusta National Golf Club, that doesn't happen. The only golf bags you're going to see around the practice area or on the golf course are bags that are currently being used by players. Number three, while the greens at Augusta National have as much movement and undulation and speed as any you're going to find in the world, golfers are not showing up to play at the Masters with brand new wedges. The work that goes into developing the wedges and putting them into the bags of the players who are going to be competing at the Masters actually starts during the Florida swing. Manufacturers like Titleist and Ping and Callaway, who know they have a significant number of players that are going to be in the field already at the Masters, will oftentimes make exact replicas or duplicates of the wedges that are currently in that player's bag. And they'll either send them home from a tournament on the Florida swing or they'll send them directly to the player's houses basically for a break-in period. And what the break-in period usually constitutes is one or two casual rounds of golf at the player's home or a couple of good vigorous practice sessions. And they're really not looking for anything other than the fact that the way that the sole grinds and the configurations are set up are going to be exactly the way that the player wants while still keeping the grooves fresh. Everybody wants fresh grooves and everybody wants to have as much spin on those greens as they can possibly get. But the player needs to know that that wedge and specifically that bounce and sole configuration is going to be just just right. After a brief break-in period, just to confirm in the player's mind that they know that the sole is going to work exactly the way they want it to through the turf, they put them off to the side and they hold them until Masters Week. Then they bring those clubs out with those nice fresh grooves and they put them into play. Quick little bonus tip for you. It is very, very common for players to travel with, say, 17 to 20 clubs when they come to a tournament like the Masters. Yes, they're going to have their 14 gamers, but most players these days are carrying also a backup driver, possibly a backup putter. That would be 15 and 16. And one of the trends that's also come around much more often is that players will carry two completely different sets of wedges. For example, I know that Justin Thomas and Adam Scott and a couple other players carry, for example, two or three different versions of their lob wedge, one high bounce, one low bounce. They might also carry a couple different sand wedges, again, high bounce, low bounce. We know that players oftentimes will come either with, for example, a five wood or a two iron, and they will swap those golf clubs in and out depending on exactly what the course conditions are going to be. So while most players like us are only have 14 clubs, Tournament players very oftentimes are showing up at tournaments with 18, 19, 20, 21 clubs. I once asked Bones when he was working for Milton Mickelson, 
how many clubs he typically brought to a tournament. He said about 25 was totally, you know, on board, that it was really an amazing how many different tools Mickelson would bring to a golf tournament to make sure that he was absolutely ready for play. All right, so Scotty Scheffler is going to be my pick to win the Masters if it's not going to be Scotty Scheffler. I think that Ludwig Oberg looks like he is somebody that has definitely got a green jacket in his future. Maybe, who knows, 2024 could be the year. It'd be fantastic if you would like, comment, subscribe to this video. I'm happy to answer any questions you've got if you leave a comment in the comment area below. Otherwise, enjoy the Masters and I'll see you soon.